Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing K is for Killer, written by Sue Grafton. It's another book in the Alphabet Murder Mystery series. It's not my favourite book in the series, by far, and it is a darker book in this series, very dark compared to the rest in the series so far, but that's not the reason that it's not my favourite. The reason is, I just don't think it's the best written and it has characters that I don't think are well developed. And it's the first time in this series we get characters that aren't great. In every other book in this series, the characters are really well written and well crafted. Even those characters that are there only for one book. They're just written with care and you can see Sue Crafton has taken a lot of time to develop them for each story. But in this book, a lot of the characters just seem half-baked half done. And there are scenes in this book as well that just seem tacked on, not fully plotted in my opinion or, or fully formed. And I just wonder if this book was a bit more rushed than other books in the series. I just get that feeling. And for those reasons, it's not my favourite in this series. This book starts out like a classic detective story. Kinsey's alone in her office after hours. The door's locked. There's a knock on the door. She doesn't want to answer it, but she decides to anyway. Janice Kepler is at her door, wanting Kinsey's help. And this is where it feels like that classic detective story. Detective, alone in an office, somebody comes needing help. They discuss, and Kinsey decides, well, I might take on the case. Just give me a few hours to see what I can get from an initial investigation, initial look around. And if I think it's worth it, I'll take on the case. But it just had that feeling of that classic story for me. Janice Kepler thinks her daughter Lorna is murdered. She was found dead in her home. The police suspect it could have been murder, but there's just not enough evidence. She did have a lot of allergies. She was asthmatic, other things going on. So there is a possibility that she died from an asthma attack or something else. So there's not a lot of evidence for murder. So the police struggled to investigate this crime thoroughly. So it's an open case at the moment but they don't think they can solve it. Kinsey, after her initial look around, decides to take on the case. So she starts investigating, starts pestering the police for info, and that's where she meets one of the police officers. And this police officer does help her on this case. The police officer that helps her is named Shaney Phillips. And you get the hint that this character could have been crafted as a possible love interest, but I don't think that was fully developed or fully explored in this book. And it's a shame because it seems like this series just needs something else for Kinsey. I do like her as a loner, that loner character, but it just needs a little bit of different element for her and needs somebody who's available for her in this series as a love interest. That's my opinion anyway. The more Kinsey investigates this mystery, the darker the story gets. So we have storylines about escort services, we have storylines about pornography videos, we have storylines that are just darker and darker as the story goes on. We even had links to possible mafia connections as well in this story, and that plays a big role in the story, not all through the story, but at key pivotal moments that mafia connection comes up, and it comes up about halfway through the story and towards the end, but it's very pivotal and very key to this story. This plot has scenes of graphic violence as well, in my opinion. You don't really get to see the graphic violence happen, but you get the aftermath. And you get the aftermath in when Kinsey is looking at the crime scene photos of Lorna's death. You get that detail, very graphic detail of what the body looked like in those photos. Also, there's a scene where somebody who Kinsey's talking to as a possible witness gets beaten in this story and beaten up quite savagely. And you get graphic detail of that as well. Not the beating itself, but the aftermath. And that's different in this book. We never had that in this series so far. And I was starting to wonder why that was occurring. This book, I think, was written around mid-90s, I think when it first came out. And around this time, we also had Patricia Cornwall with her series. And in Patricia Cornwall's series, her descriptions of crime scenes and bodies, all that sort of thing, was very graphic. And those books were selling well. So I wonder if Sue Grafton was almost led to 
include that in her series as well, that sort of graphic detail of bodies in this book. Maybe she thought that she needed to, to keep readers interested in this series, especially with other series from other female authors in the crime mystery genre, coming to the forefront and selling a lot of copies. Maybe Sue Grafton felt a bit pressured to put those things in this book. There are a couple of key points where I think this plot fell down, where scenes just felt a bit half done. One was the meeting about water rights, and there's a big argument scene in this meeting, and I just felt that was just really forced and just stood out as a bit awkward in this book. Also, there's a murder later on in this book as well, and that felt a bit convoluted, just too coincidental and too forced into the book as well. It just didn't have that feeling of being real in the book that a lot of the other crimes do in this series. Also, most of the characters, I didn't enjoy them as much as other books in the series. One character did stand out that I did enjoy, Hector Marino. He was well done. But a lot of the other characters just weren't as good as other, as other characters in the series. And even the suspects, when Kinsey's investigating different suspects and talking to people who are possible witnesses or character reference witnesses, etc. A lot of those characters weren't as well done as other books in the series. There's a couple that stand out, but most of them just felt half-baked, not well-rounded, and that left me feeling disappointed. After reading a Kinsey Malone novel, I usually feel satisfied. I feel like the characters are well done, the plot's perfect, Everything's above average, and a lot of the time, well above average. But this time, I just felt that it was just above average, you know, just borderline. And that surprised me, because this series is one of my favourite series of all time, my favourite PI series of all time. And I wasn't expecting that I wouldn't like this book as much as I thought I would. Janice Kepler is the woman who comes to Kinsey looking for help. She's an okay character. She's consistent. You feel her emotions in the story. You just feel her grief. You feel her exhaustion at trying to get to the truth about what happened to her daughter because the murder happened about 10 or 11 months ago in the time frame of this book. And that character just comes through as exhausted as getting to her last straw, really, trying to find out the truth about her daughter's death. So that all comes through and that was well done. But it's not a perfect character, and it's not as good as other characters in other books in the series, and it didn't burst from the page for me. So even though Janice was a good character, just wasn't a great character in my opinion. Hector Marino, I like this character a lot. I love that this character is not physically able. So he's walking around on crutches, so he has a disability, and I just love that in this in this character and in this book. I love the fact that he's a tech whiz and that Kinsey's going to him for help. That was a great addition to this series. I'm hoping that Hector Marino stays in the series for longer. I can't remember if he does from the top of my head from my memory, but I'm just hoping that's the case because I thought he was a standout character in this story, and I do like him and his dog. Shaney Phillips is the police officer who helps Kinsey in the investigation. He's a good character, and I'm hoping he stays in the series as well. And again, I can't remember because I've read these books quite a while ago, so I can't remember if he stays in the series after this book. But he was written in a clever way, because for some of this book, I wondered if he was the guilty person. He's got suspicion about him, and just the way he acts, and he takes phone calls at certain parts of the story as well, walks off. And I just wonder, is he the suspect? Is he the killer? There are things to like about this book, but there are also things to dislike. And in my opinion... It's one of the weakest books in the series so far. I rate it a 3 out of 5, and that surprised me, because I'd expect that every book in this series for me could be, you know, a 3.5 or higher. So for me, it was just above average. As I read through each book in this series, I'll do a book review and post a video on my channel. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. There's also a Sue Grafton playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.